Go live. Did you already go live? Oh, mine still says go live. Someone's logged in as me. I better win this. Wilson Zhang, 54. I didn't see the 53 preceding ones. time. Okay, I think, yeah, Wilson Zhang's up to 100 these days. There's a lot of him. He's multiplying. Comp 2511, someone's jumped ahead a bit. All right. Feels like this whole theater in a few weeks will just be Wilson Zhang. Wilson, I can't wait to see your exam. I now know your name. Oh, Wilson's mother has joined us with her presence, apparently. Wonder if he's got any siblings. started. Wilson's uncle, excellent. Pleased to see. Welcome Wilson's family. All right, it's getting out of hand. Wilson's dogs now come in, so let's let's get started. Not a cat though, I'm pleased to see, just the dog. That hurts, that hurts, that hurts. 
No, there's no string data type. A string is an array of char with a special null terminator at the end. All right, Wilson's really living it up. Oh, well, I just kind of gave away that answer. <laughs> but let's see if you know what it looks like. lovely thing is called a null terminator. We'll do a bit more practice with strings today. Okay. Oh, that was really silent straight away. I'm counting. Good job. Let's see if I can count as well when you get to your answer. Ooh. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh, Wilsons have been taken down. Only one Wilson. Okay, pretty well, pretty good. Um, I guess it was kind of messing with you, um, but I did say exact output to the terminal. No double quotes on the terminal. Not Wilson, great. Good. Good. So four rows, five columns um, with some primary school maths gives us 20. Hopefully. There was danger that I'd get that wrong. All right, let's see what's next. bad. Okay. Who can tell me, because this is a really good one, who can tell me why the red people got it wrong? This one over here. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. There is nothing to tell me what the size of the array is, so I can't declare it with no sizes and nothing in there for me, for the compiler to kind of decide how many, how much space to reserve for it. Same for this one over here. There's no size in it. I can't, um, I have to give it something. Whereas this, whilst there is no size, I've initialized it, which means I can infer the size of it from the initialization. All right, not Wilson and a Wilson. Now you're fighting it out in Street Fighter. are really killing the mood. <laughs> They're not that bad. Maybe. Oh, very
Very good. Not that bad at all. All right. Not Wilson, still winning. Bit of a rubbish question. This is clearly a midnight question. Yay! Because it's an array, we access it by index. Yeah, it is a rubbish question, I agree. Okay, last one. fun. All right. So don't forget your array indexing starts at zero. So you need something in the first row, which means we're sitting in these brackets and the second column. So zero, one, two. So six is the magic number. Oh, no, we can't see. Yay! Oh, great name. Come on. Is this going to be Wilson or not Wilson? No, it's not. LA. Let's go. Yep. Well done, LA. Don't know. Is there a, is the LA here or are you in LA? Coincidentally, where I will be in three weeks. Okay, so you're, no one in here that has won anything on this. Okay. Someone is saying it's the worst US city. I don't know, there's a few contenders for that. Hey? Um, hey? Oh, in the US. Oh, I don't wanna, don't wanna offend the US people. <laughs> I don't really like LA that much, but it's all right. What's your pick? Anyone, has anyone been to the US? No? Don't worry about it, go somewhere else. Oh, best US city, someone's saying vague. Downtown LA, you're at risk of being attacked if you go to downtown LA. the US I agree LA is yeah it is what it is <laughs> okay great let's do oh I've really started this whole lecture in my own mind already okay so we are in week four we're halfway through week four the assignment has been released how many people have looked at their assignment oh not bad um, Two hours after release, there was one person that had uh, tried auto tests on all four stages. Just one person. Um, madhouse. Yeah, I like to look who's... But it wasn't that many people that have started the assignment. It's a lot more. I feel like quite a few of you have started in stage one, so I hope a few more start this week in stage one. Next week, we're going to do a bigger program on Monday. A 2D array program that's going to be similar to how the assignment is structured, just to give you a little bit of a feel of what's going on. Okay, so, um, yeah, good. Um, I think so far someone said assignment is cooked. Is that how <laughs> others feel or, <laughs> or is everyone like, yes? Um, the assignment, but look, I was looking at Maths 1A and the course notes you get in that, and I feel like that's a lot harder than this course. No? 
Oh, okay. All right, so my feels were wrong, but it felt like it. Okay, so last week we um, went back and we did 1D arrays, which now you're probably thinking, well, that was easy compared to what we're doing now. To, and we looked at 2D arrays as well. That wasn't last week, that was Monday. It feels like it was last week. Um, so we drew our grid, we did a few nice things with them. It was all very exciting. Um, and then you saw assignment one and you were not as excited probably about them. Today we're gonna do a recap of 2D arrays. One of the feedback from last lecture was that I kind of went crazy on strings and then I just went, okay, that's enough strings. I wanna do 2D arrays which does happen, sometimes I get a bit manic. So we're going to go back to do some more strings and talk about strings because you will need some of that stuff in your assignment. We'll talk a little bit more about the, you know, um, how to manipulate strings as well. And then we're gonna do this thing called command line arguments, which are pretty, pretty fun. Um, and you basically will take stuff into the main as soon as you run it, which is, you know, so fun. Maybe. And then next week, you know, what you have to look forward to is we will start pointers. So, so much to look forward to. Um, you have no idea. Okay, lecture code, usual location, and we're just going to quickly look at a 2D array. That's what it looks like. Amazing. It looks like a grid. We've got our rows here. We've got our columns here. So if I've got an array of three rows and four columns, my indexes are 0, 1, 2, and my columns are 0, 1, 2, 3. And you can access each of these elements by, um, going in, by indexing whichever row and column you actually want to see within that 2D arrays. Now, someone in the feedback suggested that I could just ask the lecture theatre how they feel about things. Um, potentially that person is not in the lecture theatre because no one tells me how they feel about things when I ask them. How do you feel about 2D arrays right now? Good. Okay, this lecture theatre is completely not what the, <laughs> the rest of the feedback from Chutes is happening. So um, you guys are not the same as others. Um, okay, I'm going to do a few simple 2D array problems. Okay, and then I thought, if there is time, I'm going to do a simple tic-tac-toe. Not gonna talk about any like winning conditions, but we're just gonna do nothing serious yet, just to start out by drawing a grid. It will also allow us to talk a little bit about strings. And then on Monday, you saw me use two F gets in a row, and it didn't work, uh, obviously. And then I kind of glossed over it, because I thought, well, once I start talking about this, that's another 10 minutes, and I don't have 10 minutes. So we're gonna do that today, why that didn't work and what was, um, what was up with that. Okay, so let's do a sum row, which is a pro program to sum up each row of the array um, and output the sum of each row. And then we're gonna extend it a little bit and um, we're gonna find the maximum row sum in this 2D array. Okay. Okay, the online chat, get, getting loose, there is no beef. Calm down people online. The beef is you should be respectful when you bring your opinions and feedback at all times. That's the beef and that is a lesson you can take with you when you go to industry as well. Okay, so let's do it. So we've got an array and let's say it's got three rows and we've got three columns. So then we declare an array and for fun, and so as not to use a huge scanf, I've just kind of initialized it as well. So on this line, I've prepared an array of two-dimensional array, three, three, and we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I wasn't offended by nine this time. Um, I've got my int max to count this, the max sums. And then I've got int sum row where I'm summing up the rows. So I've got two variables to hold all of that stuff in here. So now it's time to do some stuff and to sum up each row. Okay, so um, let's have a look for um, how are we gonna do it? What do you think? What's everyone feeling? How are we gonna sum up each row? How will I go through and do it? Come on, everyone's so great with 2D arrays. This is going to be so simple. This is like a, an exam question almost, but it's not the exam question. Obviously, I'm not gonna give you the exam question in the lecture 
Although who knows, maybe in week 10, if I'm tired enough. Yeah. Yeah, use a while loop or a for loop, whichever one takes your fancy. I'm going to use a for loop. I'm also going to pay attention to our style guide and put a space in between the for and the bracket in surprising development for everyone, no doubt. Int i is equal to zero. i is going to go until what? Okay, max row. And we're going to increase it when we finish our loop. Okay, what else am I going to do? Another loop inside my loop because I've got a two-dimensional array so I need to loop through the rows and the columns. So so i is less than max column. Um, oh, who let me do that? Everyone. No one even commented. Same variable. Absolutely, yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> You know what? I'll even close the terminal, even though it's very little. There we go. How's that? Okay, great. What am I doing now? I'm moving through this. So this is me moving through the rows, which is me moving through this section. Oh, I've drawn nothing. So you really don't know what on earth is going on. Okay, so when I've declared that array, what I have is an array that looks like this. Oh, did not mean to do that. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we've got our array and this allows us to loop through the rows, so this is moving us through the rows, and then the inside one is moving us, looping us through the columns. So we want to add up every single everything in this in the column. So I'm going to say sum is equal to sum plus whatever is sitting in that array at i and j. Okay, so that's that's giving me an array. Uh, sorry, that's giving me the sum. I don't actually have a variable called sum, so okay. that would be really helpful. All right, what happens now? What does this piece of code do? That's just adding everything up. It's added up all the rows. What should I be doing now? What do you reckon? Where should I be? I can't see online. Pardon? Printing. What would I like to print and where would I like to print it? So I want to print maybe the sum of the row is, but where will I print that? Where will I know that the row has finished summing up? Which line? Yep, that sounds good. So this for loop here is giving us um, the sum of the row. This is the one that's moving us through. Sorry, this is the rows and columns. I can't stand rows and columns. This is the one that's moving me through each column and adding up each of the rows. So by the time I come out of this loop, it means that this is going to have the sum of that row in it. And then I'll print it out here. Okay, so let's see what it does for us. Let's see what it does to start with, okay? Great, connecting to CSC from an hour ago. One of them connected. All right, so now we've got our sum row. And let's run it to see what it's going to print out for us before we kind of start. All right, so it's doing the sum of the first row is 6, the second one is 21, and the third one's 45. Well, that doesn't feel right. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6, so that, that feels okay. But 4, 5, 6 is not 21. What's it doing? Because, uh, because your, 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 your sum of the, uh, the row, and then it's and the sum of every row. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. So I just keep on using the same variable and adding things to it, which means I never reset it for the next time that I run it. When should I reset it back to zero again? Yeah, so if I reset it before the second loop, what it will allow me to do is it will allow me to start adding up again. So it will let me start from zero. Okay, so let's try it again. Let's compile it and let's see if it gives us something that's... Okay, so now 6, 15 and 24, which I believe is the right... So 6, 15 and 24, yep. And our max row is still zero because we haven't really done anything with that. Okay, great. So now we know that we're able to sum each row of the array. How will we do the max now? How do we know which, which one is the maximum row? Who would tell me what kind of way we can implement that will allow us to decide which one is the maximum row? Yeah. Yep, sounds good. Okay, so after I've got my um, after I've got my sum row and before I reset it to zero, I'm going to compare it. So if max that's not what it's called. If the sum row is greater than max, then I'm going to set the max to the sum row. Okay, fantastic. Let's try if that does anything. And then you can tell me how I would wreck it. Okay, 24. So that seems to be... What else would I test it with? What do you reckon? And we can run through it as well, line by line. If Yeah. Okay. Let's test it with negative row sums. So I'm going to make all of these, not like that, I'm going to make all of these negatives. Okay, and let's see what it does now. Do you think it's going to work well or it, something's going to fail? I think it's not going to work as well for me. Okay, so let's run it. Yeah, we've got our beautiful sums, that's, that's working, but the max is not really working that well. And why do you think the max is not working? Because, because it's negative. Yeah, exactly. So in line 15, I initialized it to zero, which means that when it compares it to a negative number, it says, well, it's definitely not bigger, so I'm going to move on. So it just never changes itself from that zero. How could I combat it? Yeah. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll have the variable here and what I'll do when I start is I'll set it to the first row. So um, where would I do that? What do you reckon? There we go. I'll ask you that again. Where would I do which line? Yeah, why not? Just pick a line number. We can try it out. Okay, so you're saying over here? What will happen if I do it here? Okay, sure, let's try it out. Who thinks it's gonna work? No one, okay. The vibe is great, very negative. Okay, well, all of you were wrong, that, but why did it work? Yeah, what if I swap them around? Oh, it is, yes, we're negative numbers, that's good. It just did the last one, which is what it was meant to do, okay. Now, why did it do the last one? Because I literally set it to the sum of the row, so why would it be different to the sum of the row? I've set, the, I've set one to the other, they're always going to be equal. I'm never even going to attend this if statement. It's never going to be true. Yeah? So where would I set it then? What would I do here? 
How hideous. Yeah. If the sum row is greater than max, or if i equals zero. Or if what? If i equals zero. Okay. <coughs> or if i equals zero. Is that what you're saying? Okay, caps lock sum. Okay. What will that give us? What's the logic for that? I do, yeah. Okay, let's see if that works. And then we can run through it as well, line by line. Uh, not in the right place. Okay. Okay, so now it's saying, well, not today. You haven't really initialized max, but you're trying to check it. So um, I'm trying to access a value that doesn't exist. Yeah, that's what that error is. Because over here, I've got max, but there's no value in it. Set it to? What should I set it to? See, it's so tempting to set it to zero, but we know that's not going to help us. What? Oh, sorry. I can't, yeah, I can't see over here because of that screen. I can't see. I'm blind to the first row. Could you set, for example, if i equals zero, then you set max the first row? Sure, the first row, and then that will, okay, let's, let's try that. So let's do it here. So if i is equal to 0, that space is killing me, making that space. Um, then we're going to set it. OK, sure, let's try that. Is that going to work? Not right now. Why isn't it going to work right now? Because my sum row over here is zero, but is that going to affect me? Inside the for loop? Okay, so let's try it just after line 26. So we're sitting inside In here, right? Yeah. It's because I kept moving as well. Okay. And now it's... Okay. That's not correct indentation. That's correct indentation. I've got it. I've got it. I can do this. Okay, here we go. Let's clear it and let's try running it. Who knew something so simple? Um... All right, that's giving the right answer. Yeah, so that seems to be all right. Who wants to go through it? Yeah. Yeah, you could, yeah. Um, who wants to run through it? Who wants to run through it line by line? Yep, yep, perfect. Thank you for letting me know. That's much, um, it's much nicer when I don't feel like I'm either boring everyone or, um, okay, let's do it. Okay, so, all right, I'm going to make this a bit smaller so that it's not as, so that I have space to write. Okay, so I've got an array here, and the array is full of oh, horrible numbers. Um, so the array looks something like this. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm filling up this array, and my rows are minus 17, minus 12, minus 13, and... Um, Minus 4, minus 5, minus 6. 
minus 7, minus 8, and minus 9. Okay, this is row 0, this is row 1, this is row 2. This is column 0, column 1, and column 2. So I've created my array in here. Then I've made a variable max. It doesn't have any value to it yet. I've just got the variable. And then I've declared sum row. So I've made another thing called sum row. And this one I've initialized it to zero. Okay, great. So now it's time for us to go into the first loop. Okay, so we go into the first loop and the first loop declares an int i over here. So now I have a variable i. It's equal to zero to start with. I'm going to test it until max row, which is three. So until i is equal to th less than three, whilst it's less than three. And then I'm going to increase it each time on each step. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing in this, um, in this when I go into the loop is I make sum row equal to zero. Okay, great. It's equal to zero. Then I go into my next loop, and in my next loop, I've got a j. So I've declared a j, and the j is equal to 0. I'm going to keep going until j is, whilst j is less than 3, and I'm going to increase it each step. Okay, now I've got sum row is equal to sum row plus array ij. So I'm going to go to the right side and perform the actual action, and then assign it on the left side. So sum row is currently equal to 0, which is this one here. And array ij, my i and j is 0, 0. So that means I'm accessing whatever's sitting inside zero, row 0, column 0. So I'm accessing minus 17. So what I'm doing with these awful numbers is that I'm doing 0 plus minus 17. That's going to give me negative 17, which means that my sum row is going to be now not 0, but minus 17. Okay, great, I've got that. Now over here I'm going to check, is i equal to 0? Um, yes it is, it is equal to 0 in my case, which means I'm going to go into this if statement and I'm going to say max is equal to sum row. And that means my max is going to be now also set to minus 17. Okay, the printf statement, that will just go onto our terminal with whatever is inside sum row, which is minus 17. Uh, no, it's not. Oh my God, who let me do that? No, I haven't finished my loop. I'm still inside my loop. Okay, so I've run through this loop, this for loop, and I've increased j by 1. There we go. We've gone to 1, and I'm going to check again. Is 1 less than 3? Yes, it is. So I'm going to go into this loop again, and this time I'm going to do sum row is equal to sum row plus array ij. So my ij is now 0, 1, which means I'm accessing this element over here, minus 12, and I'm adding it to whatever was inside some row. So minus 17 plus minus 12. God help me. Minus 29, I hope. Okay. No one's corrected me, so I assume, yep. Um, okay, minus 29, and then I'll check again. Is i equal to 0? Yes, it is. So I'm going to go back into here again, and I'm going to again set max to the sum row, which is minus 29. Okay, and I've finished that for loop, which means I'm going to increase it by 1. So my j is going to go to 2, and I'm going to check again. Is 2 less than 3? Yes, it is. So I'm going to go inside this loop. Sum row is equal to sum row plus whatever's sitting at array 0, 2. Okay, inside 0, 2, we have minus 13. And I'm going to add it to whatever was inside sum row. So minus 29 plus minus 13. Minus 42. Thank you. Okay, minus 42. And you can't even see me writing it. It's just over there now. Okay, so now we're inside minus 42. Is i equal to 0? Yes, it is. So max is going to be sum row, which is minus 42. So that's going to become minus 42 now. And I'm going to increase my j by 1. So it's going to go to 3. I'm going to check my condition is 3 less than 3. No, it's not. So I'm going to pop out of this loop. I've broken it. I'm going to print out the sum of the row. And I'm going to do this sum row, which is minus 42. And then I'm going to go in here. If sum row is greater than max, okay, so my max and my sum row is currently minus 42 and minus 42. 
So that condition is not true. Or i is equal to zero, okay? i is equal to zero. So I'm going to max is equal to some row. So, and they are still the same, right? So that's now um, obsolete anyway. Okay, great. And I'm going to get to this bracket, which means I'm in this for loop and I'm going to increase my i by one. So that's now going to go to one. I'm going to check the condition. Is one less than three? Yes, it is. So I'm going to go inside this loop. And I'm going to set sum row back to zero. So sum row is going to go from minus 42. It's going to go back to zero. And then I'm going to start the J's again. So I'm going to declare. So this J died when I popped out of that internal loop. So it's like I'm declaring J again and making it zero. And it's less than three. Um, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say sum row is equal to sum row plus array IJ. And it's now at one zero. So I'm now going to be sitting over here. So it's going to be zero plus negative four, which means that my sum row is now going to be minus four. Excellent. I'll close that. Um, and then I'll go here. Is i equal to zero? No, it's not. So forget about it. I'm going to increase my j by one. So it means it's going to go to one. I'm going to check the condition. Is one less than three? Yes, it is. So I'll go back into the sloop. And I'm going to add it up again. So sum row is equal to sum row plus array ij. My i and j are 1 and 1, so that means I'm sitting over here. So it's going to be minus 5. And I am adding it to minus 4. So minus 5 plus minus 4. So that becomes minus 9. And so on and so forth. Okay, how does that feel? I feel like I can't go another loop. Yeah, no? Do you want me to keep going in the loop? No? For those people that raised their hand before, do you feel like you understand what's going on? Yep? Okay. All right. I'm going to break out of the loop myself. Um, okay. So that's doing a simple sum, okay? And you will have to be doing it um, quite a bit, well, not summing things, but you'll be doing quite a bit of movement when you get into your assignment. So before you start your assignment, really before you start any of the problem sets, Sit down with a piece of paper and a pen and try and work out what the problem is. A lot of you had problems with letters between. And I saw that a lot of you didn't just take two letters and sit down with a piece of paper and figure it out without using code to start with. Honestly, the first part to solving a problem is understanding the problem. If you can explain that problem to someone else in simple terms, it means you get it and it means that you're able to solve it. So before you touch code, just... Be old school, piece of paper and a pencil. Okay? All right, so some row. Then I decided I'm going to demonstrate if I remember maths or not. I was looking through those maths notes, um, deciding that they're harder than our course, so maybe we should get this course. No. Um, and I'd say, oh, lower triangular matrix. And then I'm not actually sure if I got it right or not that this is the definition of it. Who knows if this is the definition of it? Has anyone done it in maths yet? Okay, basically, I think it's either the lower or the upper. Don't, let's just pretend this is a definition if I got it wrong. Um, we're going to do a program that will decide whether the matrix is a lower triangular matrix. And a lower triangular matrix um, is a square matrix where all elements above the main diagonal are zero. And the main diagonal is your column is equal to row, right? So that's your main diagonal, which means those ones are zero. So it's going to be a, um, a lower triangular matrix. Maybe this is the definition of it, or maybe I'm wrong. Um, okay, and oh, oh my God, I left, I left the code in here. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I left the code in this function. I got overexcited, obviously. Um, I don't know how to get rid of it without everyone seeing it now, so I guess we're just looking at the code instead of actually writing the code. Okay, so let's quickly look at the code because I accidentally left it in and I better check before the break that all the strings code is gone. Um, okay, so we've got a function is lower try that's going to check if it's a lower triangular matrix and then I've got a main in here. I've declared a matrix and I've given it some values to save some time. In fact, I gave it exactly the same values as here. And then I said, if is lower try array, so I have a function that is testing whether it's a lower triangular matrix that's, that's taking an array into the function as an input. So 
I'm saying it's going to return an int, okay, which means I'm here, over here, this is assuming that it's returning one, which means that it, um, it is, and it's going to print out the matrix is a lower triangular. Otherwise, it's going to print out it's not a lower triangular. Okay, so let's look at the function. Okay, so the function is returning an int because it's going to return a one or you know, a zero, who knows. It can really return any number. All I care about is that it's a one if it's a lower triangular. And the name is, is lower triangular. And for input, I'm giving it an int array um, of size um, three, three. So it's gonna have nine things in it. I am using this is lower as a flag and I'm setting it to one. So I'm assuming that it's a lower triangular unless it's proven to me otherwise. So I'll go into my for loops, so the double for loop, which is helping me to go through all the elements of a two-dimensional array. So first I'm passing the columns, then I'm going to pass, first I'm doing the rows, then I'm passing the columns. And I'm going to clearly not have any spaces between four and the bracket, sorry. Um, if j is greater than i and array ij is not equal to zero. So what am I testing there? I'm testing whether my row and columns are um, greater than, if my column is greater than my row. So if you look here, my column is greater than my row and the fact that it's not equal to zero and that will allow us to really say if it's a lower, and if it's true then it's not a lower triangular, but if it's not true then it's going to return one over here. So. Who wants to go through this piece of code line by line? Anyone? I can make it a smaller matrix. <laughs> okay, someone's raising their hand. Thank you. I feel like because I got lazy, don't worry, I can take a drink of water and you know what? It doesn't matter if someone is bored as long as someone's getting benefit as well. Okay, so I just don't want to do it if no one's getting benefit from it. Okay, let's have a look. So we've got a matrix and it's loaded up into array and it's loaded up with 200150 blah blah blah. So I'll just erase all that. So before I went to solve this problem, I decided what are the reasons that will give me a lower triangular matrix. And the reasons are if I've got um, zeros in the top triangle, so zeros where the column is greater than the row, uh, that will mean that it's, um, that it's probably good. Um, and then I kind of coded it as syntax. So again, trying to understand what on earth it is with a piece of paper and then actually coding it. So my array is two, zero, zero, one, five, that looks like minus five, then we've got one, minus one and minus two. Yeah, it's just over here. It's a square matrix where all elements above the main diagonal are zero, which means that the main diagonal is where your row and your column are equals. And then the zeros are in the upper triangle of the square. Bit of maths 1A, bit of, bit of comp. Okay. So basically all that I'm checking is that I've got zeros in the top triangle. Okay, so I've created the array over here and then I've gone onto line 21 and I've called my function and given it this array. So once I've made the function call, I've moved into this function over here. I've got a lovely variable is lower that I'm using as a flag and I'm setting it to one. So I've got my is lower and, it's, and this is inside my is lower function. And I've set it to one. Okay, I'm gonna go into the loop. So for int i is equal to zero, which means now I have an i and it's equal to zero. And then I've got a j and the j is equal to zero as well. And then I'll head into this loop. So zero is less than three. Yes, I'm gonna go inside here. Zero is less than three. Great, I'm gonna go in here. Now, if j is equal to i, my j is zero and my i is zero, so this is not true, which means that this whole thing, I will not go into it, um, because this is false. 
So then I'll move out to here. I'll increase j by 1. So now it's going to be equal to 1. And you can't see that. And I'm going to check the condition again. Is 1 less than 3? Yes, it is. So I'm going to go back into this loop. And I'm going to check, is j greater than 1? So is 1 greater than 0? Yes, it is. And now I'm going to check this condition here. Is array ij, so array 0, 1, which is the one over here, is it not equal to 0? Okay, well, it is equal to 0. So that means that this whole thing is not true. So I'm going to keep going. Okay, great. Um, let's go again. So increase the j by 1 again. So j is now 2 and test it. 2 is 2 less than 3? Yes, it is. So I'm going to go back in here and try again. Is 2 greater than 0? Yes, it is. And is array ij not equal to 0? So is something at 0, 2 not equal to 0? No, it is equal to 0, which means that this is not true, which means I don't do that if statement. And I'll go back and I'll increase my j by 1 again. And check the condition. Is 3 less than 3? No, it's not. So I'm going to break out of this loop. And once I break out of this loop, this is now taken off um, my stack. So then I'll go to the i and I'll increase the i by 1. So the i will now go to 1. And I'll check again. Is 1 less than 3? Yes, it is. So I'll go back into this condition. And I'll redeclare a j, a variable j, and make it equal to 0. And then I'll head back in and I'll start doing it again. So is j greater than i, so is 0 greater than 1? Um, no, it's not. Um, so I don't bother checking the second thing. And I'll go back. j will increase by 1. Um, I'll check again. 1 less than 3. Yes, it is. So I'll go back in. Is 1 um, less than 1? No, it's not. So this is false. So I'll go back and I'll increase the j by 1 again. So j is now 2. And basically, it's going to run through the whole array over and over again, looking for those two conditions. So, and then at some stage, it's going to decide that that's that I'm never going to enter this if statement here, um, and that means I'm going to return is lower, which is equal to one. So the flag that's going to come back is one, which means that it's a lower triangular matrix. If I change one of these values to a different value, then that, it's not going to do that. Obviously, it's going to, at some stage, trigger the flag to be zero again. OK. So it's, it's saying it's low because none of those conditions are ever met. Exactly. So because anything above this diagonal is um, equals to zero, which means it is a lower triangular. I kind of forced you to understand what on earth that matrix is as well. <sighs> All right. I think it's a very good time to take a five minute break and then when we come back we're going to do some strings. Does that sound good? I'm going to disconnect my screen so I can remove my code.
All right. So much to so much to um, to do. So much excitement still happening. Okay. Um, we're going to do a few things. Then we'll do um, a bit for the command line arguments because it's a new thing. So I want to do it um, a bit more. Okay. So just a reminder of what a string is in C. Um, it is an array of char that ends in a null terminating character. So a string is an array of characters, but one special thing about it is that we make space for it by, uh, for that null terminating character at the end, and that's what says that it's a string. What that means is that we're doing anything with, character, with strings, we know when to stop um, when we have any loop, that we want to loop through a string. It, it means that we know that we want to stop when we get to that null terminating character, and it will signal the end of the string. Okay, the function that we use to read a string off um, terminal is fgets. Um, and the reason we use that over scanf, um, because you've been using scanf for everything else. But we don't use scanf percent s because um, that is a bit, of a, a bit of an issue there. You can cause an overflow because you're not really limiting the number of characters. So fgets function, it actually limits how many characters you are scanning in because you specify the array and you specify the length um, that you're going to go to. And then the stream, as we said on Monday, you're only in this course reading from standard input, so from the terminal, stdin. Okay, um, so you know that when you were scanning until, well, a lot of you were not that happy with that control D situation. But we're basically looping and while scanf is equal to one, so or two, or however many things you're expecting to scan from it. We can do very similar things by scanning uh, a string off our terminal by checking whether or not it's reached this keyword null. Okay. So what fgets does is it keeps reading things until length minus one is read in, and the length that you specified. Um, in your fgets function, and the reason for that is because it, it inserts the null terminator, which is why it's length minus one. Um, whether a new line character has been pressed, and that was the issue last time, so when I did my fgets, what happened is the fgets read also my new line character when I pressed enter, and it was still sitting in the buffer, so then the new one um, got that new line as well, which is really lovely. Um, and then or an end of file, okay? The end of file is kind of that null situation, okay? It means you've, you've finished scanning things in. Whichever one of those comes first. Okay, so if you want to keep doing the words, then you kind of uh, keep doing um, until it's equal to null and, until contr and then control D triggers that null situation because it will return um, an end of file to the function. Same as scanf. The same thing, when control D is pressed, it returns an end of file um, to the function. Okay, so we will use it in context, don't worry. fputs is another function, um, and what it does, it just really puts out that array that you have, but you can also print f and use percent %s. Um, that's really up to you. It's just one of, just another um, function that's available to you. You can use fputs whatever array you want to put and where you're putting it out to and it's called standard output which is you're putting it out to the terminal. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. Sometimes it's useful. Um, sometimes if you're feeling lazy, I don't, printf is not your vibe, but you can use printf as well. Okay, I'm going to do, um, I think we're going to do a function and what we're going to do is we're going to do um, calculating the length um, of a string. Okay, so we're going to declare a char ward ch uh, language going. Today has been a very long day. Um, an array of characters, and I'm going to make it a max length. Max length is 124, so clearly I might be wasting a lot of space, which is also one of the issues with arrays, is that we do often waste space because we um, give it a size, and that size, we try to make it bigger, just in case. Um, I'm going to have an int length variable. I'm going to set it to zero, and that's going to be the variable that I want to keep track of the length of the string. Okay, type in a word. So we've just said we're going to use fgets. 
and we're going to pop it inside our array mm, shouldn't have highlighted that into our array and the length of the string is max length and then we're going to read it in from standard input okay so we're going to read in and then we're going to do some magic here how do you think i can keep looping through a string and knowing when i've reached the end of it which i said like five minutes ago let's see who's listening Yeah, so I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna search to for the um, null terminating character. Okay, so um, whilst or even while, not whilst. I'm not doing English. Okay, so while my array at index i is not equal to a null terminator, I'm going to keep counting. So I'm gonna add one to my length. Um, I'm going to increase i, which currently doesn't even exist outside because I've suddenly decided to use an, an i uh, while loop. Okay, this I could do this nicer as well. Okay, fantastic. Do we think this is going to do it? Is this going to be the magic solution? This is all that that, well, kind of all that that string length is doing. Not quite. Okay, should we try it? Who thinks it's going to work? No one. Fantastic. Always reassuring to have that feedback. Okay. Great. Six characters. Is there six characters in here? One, two, three, four, five. There isn't six characters. Let's try another one. Why did I have to do so many? Um, 16 characters, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It keeps giving me one more. Why is it doing that? It's not counting. Is it counting the null terminator? Is that what it's doing? No, it's not because I'm saying... When I exit out of there, it's going to be equal to the null terminator. But what, 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 what have I done? Blah. I am struggling. What have I done that has made it count? Um, yeah. Uh, I think it's counting a new line character. You think it's counting a new line? Yeah. Yeah, because when I put in my... When I use F gets, I pressed enter and it, it swallowed that up as well. Yeah, very good. Um, how can I get rid of F get? How, no, I don't want to get rid of F gets. My God, five o'clock, not a prime time. Um, how can I get rid of that new line? Yeah. Uh, I don't know how you can get rid of it, but logically you just have like a Boolean variable and then when you hit the terminating character, you just take that Boolean variable and call it. Okay, um, a complex solution. Well, not a complex, but more complex than, uh, yeah, but that would work, yeah. I could just be very simple about it and, yeah, I could start counting my length at one, I could minus one from it. What else can I do? Yeah, I could be, I could search for a new line and then just replace it with a null terminating character, absolutely which is one way to swallow it up. Yeah, so there's a few different ways to do it, okay? And you, it's up to you what you choose to do and it's up to the question what the question is asking. There is a function called getchar which you can also use just to swallow up a character as well um, and it would swallow a new line too. Um, but I feel like that's too many functions so I'm too scared to like write it in. Um, okay, let's do another one. Okay, this one takes in a string and outputs that string in reverse. How do we feel about that? Great. What I'm getting from this audience is amazing. The vibes, the vibes, the vibes. Okay, so I've got my array of characters, max length, and I think I'm going to have a one to store my reverse one in. Why not? Just to go for two arrays. Okay, so I've declared another one here and it's going to store that one in there. 
I'm going to type in something, I'm going to read it off, and then what am I going to do here? Okay, how will I start at the back of the string? Not at the front of it. I don't know why I just looked at Gab and expected you to answer my question. Well, no one else is helping me. Yeah. Minus one from what? What's a simpler way to do something like that? Yeah, what's a simpler, how can I, what can give me the length of that thing, that string? What's a lovely function that can give me that? S-T-R-L-E-N, yep. So if I use that function, I can minus one, and that will give me um, the length of it. So I could say, okay, uh, I'm going to use more steps than needed, so I'm going to use this and I want to measure this and then what I will do is I'll subtract one from it. Okay, so that will give me the size um, and that's, this will give me an index at the end of it, okay? Okay, fantastic. So why do I minus one from it? Who can tell me why this minus one exists here? What do we reckon? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So if my um, hello is five things, I don't want to have an array at index five because that doesn't exist. So I need to minus one to get the maximum um, index that I can have. Okay. So I've got my length. I've got an index that I can use to loop around. I don't know why I did that. Anyway. Okay. I'm just going to do that then. For i is equal to zero, and I'm going to check that my um, array at index i is not equal to a null terminator, which will allow me to move through the array. Okay, and then I'm going to Okay, this is probably, uh, okay, so does this make sense? Yes, no, maybe? Okay, you're a bad gauge. <laughs> okay, to the person whose feedback was that I can get a better, Gab, can you do an online poll? Let's see what the online people think. Does this, does this for loop make sense? We could do this much faster by you saying, yes, it does. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Makes so much sense. Oh, my God. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. And someone is asking, it doesn't make sense. People online are saying it doesn't make sense. Okay. <sighs> All right. This is very quickly what it's doing. Okay, so what it's doing is I'm setting, let's say that the word that I read in here inside um, my array is going to be hello. So I'm going to have hello and then I'm going to have a null terminator app here. This is index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, and that's the special bit at the end. Okay, so when I get up here, my j is going to be equal to string length and of this string and what it gets is it doesn't include this character in it. Um, so it gets how many things there are, which is five, and then it's subtracting one, so four, which is giving me this last array. So j is currently equal to four. Then I've got an i and that i is going to be equal to zero when I go in here and what I'm checking here is that um, this is my word over here, the array, I'm checking that at index i, so I'm going to start at zero, it's not equal to the null terminating character, which means that I'm just going to go through this word. Okay, and then I'm going to add increment i as I go. Then I'm going to say the reverse one, the reverse array, at index i, so at index zero, I'm going to put in whatever's inside the original array at index j. So at index j I had four, which means that my new array is going to get 
an O in there because that's what was sitting inside um, and that's at index zero. Okay, and then I'm going to decrease J by one. So my J is going to be three. And then I'll go again, okay, I'll increase the I by one and I'll check is whatever's sitting in the original array at index one equal to my null terminator? No, it's not. So that's perfect. So then I'll use my new array at index I, so at index one, and I'm going to place whatever's in the original array at index J, so at index three. So at index three, I had an L, so that means the L is going to go in here now. Okay, and then I'll go again and I'll loop through and I'll in make my J by one less and then I'll increase my I because I've come to the end. So that's going to be two. And I'll check again is the original array at index two, is it equal to my null terminator? So at index two, I'm not equal to a null terminator. So I'll go into the loop and I'll put into my reverse um, at index I, which is at index two over here. I'm going to put in whatever is inside the original array at index J, at index two. So another L is going to go in here. I'm going to subtract one from J, so it's going to be one, and then I'm going to increase I by one over here, and I'm going to, oh, very exciting, a bit of music. Um, original array at index three, is it equal to the null terminator? No, it's not. I'm really struggling with my letters. Um, did I increase my I? I feel like I've already done an L. I should be up to the E. Okay, we're not at um, the zero yet, so I'm going to go in and at, no, this makes sense. At index three, I'm going to place whatever was sitting inside J, which is at index one. So the E is now going to go in. I'm going to decrease it by one, so it's going to become zero, and then I'm going to increase my I by one, so it's going to become four. I'm going to check is whatever's sitting at index four an old terminator? No, it's not, so I'm going to go into that for loop. And into the new array at index four, I'm going to place whatever it was in the original array at index zero, so the H. So that means I've just copied it backwards. I'm going to decrease the J by one, which is going to give me a minus one. And I'm going to increase the I by one, which is going to give me a five. And when I go here and check, is whatever's sitting in the original array at index five, is it equal to the null terminator? Yes, it is, which means I'm going to break out of this loop, finally. And I could potentially print out whatever is here and, um, and voila. Okay, so should we run it? I mean, we've run it with our heads as though we're the computer. Okay. Oh, fantastic. Good O. Why is it doing that? There is a reason for it. Sorry, that's the reason I'm running it like this. What's the reason for it to do that? What was the error actually? So you can see what the error is. Where did it have the problem? The problem was stack buffer overflow, access past the end of a local variable, blah, 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 blah. It had the problem and look at the values when the execution stopped. I was six, J's minus one. It has that kind of in there, but there's a whole bunch of uninitialized. It had that in there. There's a whole bunch of rubbish in there. That's rubbish, 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 so much rubbish. What's the problem? Well, how can I kill off? How can I finish up my beautiful thing? How can I say to that lovely array over here that it is in fact a string and finish it. I could, but also I know that I've finished over here, don't I? I know that I've come to the end. I know that at this point, once I've broken out of this bracket, I've copied my reverse, I've reversed my word. So whatever comes on the next index is going to be a null terminator, which is also the new. See what I mean? So. When I've gotten out of this loop, I've reversed it already. So what I could do is I could just make the next thing. Um, null terminator, which will kill whatever's coming afterwards. Yeah. OK, let's see if that helps us.
Okay, so excellent. What's happening here? Why is it like weird style-wise? Why is it, why is it, why is this on one line? Why is this on the other line? This is going to bug you throughout your assignments, yeah. Because it also includes the, uh, the new Yeah, so you're really going to hate new lines at this point in time, a lot. Um, okay, so how can I get rid of this new line over here? I can get rid of it after I read it in. I could check for a new line. So I can go through the word and I can check where there's a new line. Or I can read the last thing that was in the buffer. Oh, I give up. I'm just going to use a get char. <laughs> Sorry, this is just too fast to do. Um, okay, so this thing here, it gets the last character that was in, the, in there. And then it, I've chucked it out, okay? Because I haven't, I haven't assigned it to anything. Someone's cooked. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm cooked as well. It's Wednesday afternoon. The week's almost over. And now you have something new and exciting to welcome you home. Okay, well that didn't, I didn't pick up that character. Uh, I did before. Okay, we could just search for it as well and get rid of it. So we could search for a new line. Okay. No, I didn't give anyone notice. I'm just, everyone's dying and I'm very conscious that I have to cover command line arguments and today I'm going at snail's pace for some reason. Okay, we will come back to this, okay? Because the new line, it's there, but it doesn't matter. I want to do command line arguments, sorry. We will come back, I promise. And we will kill the new lines next week because they, it doesn't matter. We will search for a new line and kill it. Okay. Command line arguments. We're going to do them just before we um, move on. Okay, to finishing this whole week. Clearly that can't come fast enough. Okay, so so far we've only had an int main and inside that main it's been void. We haven't given our function anything to go with. Okay, and when we start running our main is when we start using scanf to scan some input and then we take that input in and we do something with it. However, there are times when you want to be running your program with input already, okay? It's kind of what you do with DCC as well. When you run DCC and you give it some arguments um, and it will run and do something with it. So what that means is we're going to take arguments in straight away from the command line and we're going to start our main with those arguments already there. So it's something called this. So instead of the void, this is what you can put in and it's not, that's going to be, it's not going to make a lot of sense to you right now. So this thing here, the first argument, int argc, it's the count of arguments. It's how many things you have given it, including the name of the program. Okay, it counts up how many things there are. And this one here, char star argv, you will know what the star means next week. It's nothing that you will enjoy. Um, but just think of it as a, a whole bunch of strings, okay? So it's giving you every single argument as a string. And you can, you can pile them out um, and check what they are and then check them for things as well. So it actually gives you the different command line arguments that you're taking in. All right, I think we should do an example of it, okay? Should we do an example of it? Oh, I was going to use is alpha. I didn't have time to do that. Okay. All right, let's do that. Um. Okay, so this one is going to show us command line arguments. So over here now, instead of the void, I've got this int argc char star argv with a square bracket, so it's telling us it's an array of char. And what I'll do is I'll say, okay, there are percent %d command line arguments in this program, okay? And then the argument, the variable that I'm calling is this argc from here. So to give you an example of it, just to run it now with just argcs, if I compile it,
Okay, so when I start running it, so that's the name of the program, and then I might give it one, two, three things. Okay, and it say there's four command line arguments in this program. It's counting this as one of them, so the name of the program, and then two, three, four. So it's telling me how many things I've put on the command line, okay? Okay, fantastic. So now I want to know what those command lines arguments actually are. So argv0 is all, that should have been a comment, it's always the program name because it's the first thing that's going to come when I run my program. It's going to be the name of that program. Anything after that is going to be um, an argument that I've given it, okay? So how do you think I would loop through the other ones? So you can see it at index zero is um, my argv demo. If you would like to see it in action, it will print it out for you. So if I run it again, and there we go. So now it's going to say I've got two command line arguments and the program name is argv demo, which is what's sitting at index zero. Okay, how will I loop through the other ones? Just loop through them, yeah. yeah. Treat myself, that's right. Okay, so let's loop through them. So for int i is equal to zero. What will be my condition here? Pattern? Yep, argc. So how do I know when to stop? Very handy thing is that something counts up my arguments for me. So until I'm less than argc, I'm going to add and what I'm going to do that is I'm going to print out whatever is sitting I'm trying to do it um, okay and then it's my index i and whatever is inside my argv i Okay, so let's try that. So I'll compile it and then let me run it. So now I've got two command line arguments. Program name is argv demo at argv0. Argv0 is argv demo and argv1 is hello. So it's listed out things pretty badly because there's no new lines, so it's looking hideous. Okay, but that's allowed me to cycle through them and get, you know, understand what they are. Okay, to completely. No, I'm not going to blow your minds today. I'm just going to leave, let, let it sink in first. Um, okay, so how are we feeling about that? Command line arguments so far? Still okay? Yeah, it's, it's okay. It kind of, it's mind-blowing, but it's okay, maybe. Okay, so oh, should I blow your minds? I don't know. Are you ready for it? It's really a 2D array. Oh. Who's cooked? Someone's cooked. Um, okay, um, someone's saying, what's the point? <laughs> okay, I don't know. What's the point of life? Um, it's really so that you can get something in whilst you're doing... A, you know what's a really good example? If I want to run my program and add two numbers, I don't care to scan F the numbers in. I literally just want to run the program, say one, two, and I want it to give me the sum because my basic maths is obviously very good and I need help to do that. And how would I do that? We're going to do that. It's going to be so exciting. Okay, I'm going to leave it for a second. I won't cook you any further. People online are literally cooking um, and it's just, it's hurting my feelings. So I'm going to show you a function called a to i, okay? And it's leading me into this beautiful thing. Okay, what's a to i? It's ASCII to integer. So in our case, it's useful. Hey? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Oh, it's a pressure cooker in here. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, let me cook. Thank you. Okay, so... Um, Okay, great. Um, okay, so this function a to i, what it helps us to do is if I put in these lovely words on my command line, they are read in and they're given to me as an index. It's like a string, right? It's, a, it's an array of char. 
that's not a number I can't really do. What if I put a one there, which I did to start with, and then I caught myself and thought, no, that's going to be awful. Let's say I'm going to have, let's see what happens if I try to add those two things, okay? Um, I don't really want to, but I do. Okay, let's see I'm going to read, okay? Let's do it, okay. Okay, so I'm going to take and print out how many arguments there are, just so we can keep seeing what's going on. So there are... Okay, and that's going to be your argc. So that's the argc that's sitting over here. It's counting up my arguments. And let's say I want to add those arguments up. Okay, so what I want to do is something very simple. I really just want to go through, um, loop through all of them. So. For now, we know that argv0 is the first thing, that's the program name. So I probably shouldn't start at 0 because I don't want to add my program name to anything. So I might start at 1 for the first argument over. And I'll keep going until argc, which is the number of arguments I have. And I'll add 1. And what I want to be doing is I want to say sum is equal to sum plus whatever is sitting inside my argv at i. So whatever that argument is on there I want to add it in okay and and then I want to output what that thing is who thinks this is going to work I've gave, given it away because I've said it's not going to work but we can all dream okay let's try to compile it and see if it does anything for us okay it's saying um, no thank you I'm not going to do that that's rubbish um, with a really awesome um, warning that you probably don't understand. Incompatible pointer to integer conversion assigning int from char star. Okay, so what's happening there, what that error means is I'm trying to add up something that cannot be added up. It's not an integer. I cannot do maths with it. Okay, so what I do is I use a function called a to i to change it to an integer. Okay, so I will do a to i, whatever is sitting inside there. And a to i is something that converts from ASCII to integer. So that means I'll be able to take that one and I'll make it an integer. And you don't have to do it yourself. It's all done for you. Um, but of course, I need to include a standard library to do it because that a to i function is sitting inside yet another library that you are now introduced to, um, which is your std lib.h. Okay? So A to I is located inside your standard library and it allows us to do this. You don't have to think yourself. It does all the thinking for you. Okay, so that's now compiling because it's no longer offended by me. So now I'll run it and I'll run it with numbers one, two, three. Okay, there are four arguments and the sum of the arguments is six. Amazing. Okay, what if I do um, more numbers? Okay, still going okay. Seven arguments and the sum of them is now 21, which is, I assume, the correct answer. Um, so, how does that feel? Okay, one person good, one person thumbs up. Okay, one, two, yes, yes, okay. Yes, two thumbs up. That's, that's like three people, four people. Okay, great. So, five people get it. I hope everyone else does as well. Um, Okay. So what actually counts as an argument? Is it just anything that you put in that line? So everything on the command line is an argument, including the program name. So the first thing I run, that's what's sitting inside index zero. And does that count as just one? Just that there are no spaces? And that counts one. as one thing. Yep. And they're separated by spaces. So every time there's a space, it's gone over to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Okay, and it's going to be quite useful for you as you keep going and um, loving your um, CS degree. Okay, let's compare numbers. No, let's compare strings because we haven't had enough of strings. No one's traumatized yet by strings. Okay, so this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two um, strings. You know what, I'm gonna take them from the command line. I'm going to put in two strings and then when I go into my main, I'm going to compare them and I'm going to say are they the same or are they not the same. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, it counts. So inside argument zero is the name of the program, which is why my loop started at one. So I'm not using it in my sum. And then you will get an extra argument that's a sum. So the, the name of the program is considered to be an argument as well, which is why there's one extra to the ones that you will probably do something with. Okay, so what we'll do is, who remembers the library name for, for comparing two strings? String.h, yep, amazing. I mean, what a great name. Who remembers what I would write in here to take something off the command line? Okay, int argc char star argv array. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, what this is saying is I'm going to have two arguments on my command line. So I'm going to, I want to enter something like this. If I run it when I compile it, and it's going to say compare strings, hello, hello. Okay, so if I do it with those things, then argv0 is going to be compare strings. And argv1 is going to be hello. And argv2 is going to be hello as well. So I want to be able to compare these two. And if they're the same, so if argv1 and argv2 are the same, then I'm going to output the two strings are the same. And if they're different, I'm going to say the two strings are different. Yeah. What do you mean? Like, for example, if I were to add like one output as a module, does that string that takes into the program as a string? Uh, yeah, as an ASCII, yeah, as a string. And then you, that's why you use A to I because it converts it to an integer. Yeah. Um, someone on the, oh, someone on the chat's asked if pointers is considered a hard topic. If you're cooked now, you'll be definitely cooked next week. <laughs> But they're so much fun. They're the reason we learn C. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> something to look forward to in week five before the break. Okay, so we're going to take two strings out and we're going to compare them. Who remembers the function to compare strings? Thank you. STRCMP. What are the two strings I'm going to be comparing? argv1 and argv2. Okay, so I'm assuming that everything's going to be correct and no one's going to stuff me up and enter extra arguments or whatever else. Okay, so I'm going to check. If string compare those two things, does someone remember what it is equal to when they're exactly the same? Zero. zero. Okay. If two strings are the same, it's going to equal to zero. And that means if I use that string compare function, again, available to you, you don't have to think. Um, and all that function is doing is comparing things, argument by, I don't really need to do that, but whatever, it's there now. Okay, and then otherwise they're not the same. Okay, who thinks this is gonna, this is gonna be great? Yep, one person thinks it's gonna be great, finally. It's not just, no one thinks it's gonna be great. Okay, let's run it. Let's compile it first, actually. Great, and I'm going to compare strings, uh, and I'm going to do hello, hello. Two strings are the same. Um, two strings are different. Okay. Um, Two strings are different. Amazing. Okay. Um, oh, someone's burnt? I don't know. There's only so many cooking metaphors now we can have. Okay. So comparing strings, taking them off the command line arguments. Was tempted to say cooking with gas. Um, I hope not. Okay. What about if I wanted to con compare two numbers as, you know, as soon as I take them off the um, command line? Okay. So similar thing. If I want to um, convert the string 
to an integer. So ASCII to integer. Who remembers which library that was in? STD. Yep, the standard library. All right, you never have to remember them. You can just look them up, right? You're not expected to remember where everything is located. All right, so then inside here, if we're taking things off the command line, we've got int argc char star argv, square brackets, and we are going to, oh, we're just comparing them. How amazing. I'm going to convert them into, I'm going to use a to i to compare them. So if whatever is sitting inside argv1 is equal to whatever is sitting inside argv2, which is my first two arguments, then I'm going to do, okay, fried. Yep, that's okay. Oh. Okay, uh, and then otherwise they're not the same. All right, so let's have a look what that does. Okay, well it compiles, so that's a nice thing. Okay, so let's do the same number. Great, that's going really well for me. Um, why isn't it working? Oh, why isn't it working? Yeah, because it's a string, because I forgot to use A to I, like I told you to use it, but I didn't do it myself, so it's not really understanding what I'm talking about. And you can't compare two strings by using an equal sign, okay? Okay, so I've converted them both to integers. Let's try that again. The pressure, the pressure. Oh, amazing. Why is it doing that? Yeah, because I'm... Yeah, exactly. Because I'm coming out and I'm just, I'm just printing out whatever is there as well. So I'll put it into the else and then it will not give me that extra um, output where it's indecisive about whether they're the same or not. Okay, so now they're the same, and now they're different. Amazing, and you've learned so much about arguments. All right, um, on a scale of 1 to 10, how cooked is everyone? 1,000. All right, I think it's time to um, finish this dinner affair, and... Um, if you have any feedback, please don't tell me how cooked you are. But maybe you can tell me a little bit. Um, all right. Have a great rest of the week. Good luck with assignment. I'll see you next week.